हेलो सलाम शलोम नमस्ते सताल अलोहा ओला चाओ पांचर एंड प्रीवियट I am so joyful to be with you again today and you will be really joyful to be with us again today because we have an amazing joyful guest joining yes. us that is Vivian Joy. So hello to have you Vivian welcome. Thank you. Some people just call me Joy. I was at an event yesterday and they just said, oh, hello, Joy. I'm thinking, well, there's worse things to be called than Joy. So I'm good with it. <laughs> hello. Nice yes, to see you again. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. So uh, Vivian or Joy or Vivian Joy. <laughs> uh, please, just for those people who might have missed our last episode with you, will you tell us more about who you are and what you do? Well, do you want the short version or the long version? So who am I? So uh, obviously I'm Vivian Joy. Um, I have been helping women to create joy in their lives for many, many years now, thousands of women, uh, because most of them don't actually. They uh, feel quite disempowered. They're doing what they think they should do, what everybody wants them to do. Like women typically will become people pleasers from being the mother to the, the wife or partner. Uh, and so actually when they get into building a business, they bring all of that with them. So they're no longer enjoying that either. They're serving and not selling. So they end up really spending lots of time uh, giving too much and not actually getting back what they need. So um, basically what I help women with is to build their business, help them to build the joy in their business, enjoy that. So, you know, fun and easy as your business is called, because it can be when you're doing it your own way, whereas lots of people try and do it other people's way and that's never going to be our way. So we've got to find our own way in life in every part. So yeah, that's what I do. I said, do that through mindset coaching and sales marketing and strategy training and I even coach and certify coaches so that they can go and help other people as well which is my own legacy so it's great when we get to legacy level of life isn't it where we're in the place where it is all about enjoy and fulfillment and satisfaction so yes I think that's where we all want to get to isn't it indeed indeed and I mean like for me ah uh doing the this kind of work where you're not just getting to help yourself but you're getting to help other people impact other lives i mean that is the essence of who a change maker is that is the essence of who our 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 community is that we're talking to right now so you are definitely our people and you're talking to the right community of people yay thank you it's always nice to meet like-minded people I, there are some miserable people in the world aren't there and you know we have we could we could get into that couldn't we we've yeah. had a really yeah. tough few years and i think we're all just trying to get back on our feet but financially it's tricky with all the hike in prices of just about everything all over the world actually i'm in the uk i know you're not but we've got that here and you know we've got that everywhere um so yeah, it's uh, it's having an impact across the board, really. So we could be really miserable and worried and scared, but actually that just makes more worry and misery and fear. So we need to yeah. and, you know, we want to attract and we want to be what we want to attract. So yes. here we have fun, easy, enjoy. Yes. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. You know, that is so important. It's like you're going to live your life anyway. You're going to be working anyway uh might as well work and joy work and happiness work with fun and ease uh rather than all the other stuff i have a client she's a spiritualist and she has this mantra that if it's not a hell yes it's a no and i really like that because so often we say yes to things just to keep everybody happy and very often it makes us a bit miserable when we're doing that so yeah if it, so uh you know i'll give her her own statement back and she's talking about you know whether clients are right and i'll say are they a yes an absolute 100 percent yes because if not they're a no so um yeah <laughs> uh we should be doing what makes us happy but most people don't know what that is even they don't know what that is they don't know what that is because they're so busy surviving and trying to, you know, keep everything going that they don't stop enough to work out what it is they want to enjoy in life um, when they're given the choice. Me, myself, when I was in a position where I could live anywhere in the world, I genuinely didn't know where I wanted to live. 
I thought, this is ridiculous. Um, I, I mean, even in the UK, I didn't know where I wanted to live. I was hoping that something was going to happen to give me some direction rather than me choosing. And then I met my partner. So that did give us a bit of direction. But um, yeah, then we could both live wherever we wanted to. And then there was two of us saying, well, we don't know where we want to live. So just simple things like that. And it's often the case when somebody starts a business as well, they don't know what to do. I would have probably started one way before. I've been in business 20 years, but I would have started one way before that if I didn't have any idea what. So um, yeah, sometimes we wait for guidance rather than be our own guidance. Yes yes oh my gosh okay so you know this is such a important issue i think we're talking about not knowing what to do how do you figure out what to do how do you make the right decisions like every moment of our life we're faced with choices how do we figure out what the right choice for us is what the right decision is Tell me more about how you work on that with your people. Hey, thanks for tuning into this episode. Hope you're getting value out of it. For your information, this episode has been sponsored by the Happiness 101 program. Are you a change maker, coach, trainer, or healer? Are chains of fear holding you back from making the impact and income you desire? Using a unique combination of positive psychology and the spiritual wisdom of our most effective change makers, the Happiness 101 program helps you break through your limiting beliefs and manifest the abundance and success you desire with fun and ease. Interested? Book a free Happiness 101 exploration call with me, your happiness expert, Samia Vano. Just use my online calendar link in the show notes. Now, back to the show. Well, that's a great question. I mean, everything is a decision. Every, for every decision, we have a strategy that's built into the brain. So we create these from birth, realistically. We start when we're about really realistically setting down our strategies when we're six or seven years old. And some of these get, get warped a bit when we're scared. But actually, those are the strategies we take with us for everything. So some people make decisions like by how they feel and like oh, in the moment and real kind of spur of the moment decisions, uh, acting, haste, repent at leisure. Uh, and other people will go and research it and really think about it and feel into it and kind of really go into detail and actually sometimes never make the decision. They're waiting for that decision to be made for them, a bit like me with the, the moving. Um, and so and then there's others that have got a hybrid of this. But um, the way I help clients is I help them to try things on for size. So, for example, if you're buying clothes, it's hard to look at something online and go, think how it's going to feel or how it will fit or if it will be comfortable to wear or, you know, all the things that you would, if you could go and try it on in the dress shop, you would be able to do. So it's the same if you're making a decision, especially if you've got a few choices to make. So if you can try it on for size emotionally, mentally, even physically, and financially and spiritually, whatever, you know, whatever that decision is, then you start to get a feel for whether that is the right decision. And say you've got, I don't know, three, say you were accepting a new job, let's say. And if you tried on those three different jobs and how they would change you and what they would give to you. And from your own perception, of course, because we don't know the reality, you'll start to really get a feel for which one is right. And I always say not just the positives because that's that's not real because life isn't just positives but actually even the negatives so um when uh, i used to run really big events pre-covid in fact i ran my last one on the 20th of february 2020 2002 2020 where i launched my machine joys life foundation and before this it was a massive event bigger than any event i'd ever run the cost of it was bigger the marketing budget i needed more people it was it was quite a scary thing to do um like you know two or three times bigger than events i'd run and i remember one of my clients saying to me aren't you scared and i said no i'm not at all scared tracy her name is i said no i'm not at all scared i'm excited and she said well what if nobody comes what if something goes wrong and she had in her head all the troubles and i thought oh i need to when i'm trying this on and kind of future pacing it and imagine it and visualizing it 
I also need to visualize what can go wrong and all the negatives as well. Because if my brain can really get prepared and know that it can cope with everything that could go wrong, then everything is okay. So I can move fearlessly forward. I can't, I won't have anxiety. So not only will I make the decision to do it, but actually I'll make the decision to enjoy the whole thing. So that was a really useful question that I had asked that day. And this Tracy has no idea to this day that that was probably a really important part of my journey and how I help clients now. So I visioned what it would like if the tech didn't work, if the speakers didn't arrive, if people didn't come. I tell you what though, I didn't envisage um, my first ever event was it snowed. So we had really, really Really bad snow in the UK and I didn't visualize that at all so there was one thing I did have to deal with but because everything else in my head I knew how I was going to handle it that actually worked out okay as well so yeah visualize the positives and the negatives because the, the reason people stop making decisions or get get stuck in fear is because they think they might not be able to cope with an outcome so if we can let the brain know that we can absolutely cope with whatever the outcome is then we are more likely to take those steps and move forward and make the decision. Because also, it's not just about making the decision, it's taking action. Yeah. So like I've made decisions lots and lots of times in my life to lose weight and then not taken the right action. So that does say to me, I've never really truly made the decision. I've been still in that decision-making process and not moving forward because decision plus action equals outcome. So yeah. just decision yeah. on its own is not enough actually because we can be deciding still and think we've decided until we have to put something into play and then it's not because then we realize we're still deciding because otherwise we'd have taken a step forward not all of the steps but just with the first step so that's how i help my clients is we look into the future kind of almost like a crystal ball feel it in every single way what will your partner think what will your friends say you know what will your children think what will your clients say what will your you know whoever whatever the decision is everything outside of that person as well as inside how will it feel what will happen if it fails what will happen if it succeeds what could go wrong you know what if you don't earn any money if you fail financially so all of those things and then the steps to take forward because if that client then goes away and takes that first step, then we know that decision has been made and they're on their way. And after that, it's just taking step after step after step, which we we logically like to do. We are very future kind of problem solving facing. So, yeah, so that's how I do it. How about you? How do you help people? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, before I let you ask me how I do it, I have a couple of questions for you because, okay. So as you were talking, by the way, I love this strategy and I love this idea. And there's actually a lot of research that validates that your approach is amazing and awesome and really, really works. And when you think about a couple of challenges that I have run into. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, I would love your... Um, your wisdom on how to solve these challenges for any of our listeners who might be facing them as well. So my first problem that I know I used to run into all the time uh, with trying to use this technique was, you know, like how you said uh, to visualize and think through like all the different potential problems also that you can run into, right? And my problem was that I couldn't even think of what problems I could run into. You know, I, I really I genuinely um, couldn't even think about what problems, like, like I couldn't imagine, like, what could the problem be? I've made such a amazing plan this is, you know <laughs> I mean I was just you know stuck there and and then when the problems came up I was like oh my god I didn't even didn't even occur to me that we could have this problem and I can't tell you how many times that happened with me so how do we get better at even anticipating the the kinds of problems that we might run into your perfect solution my darling the absolute perfect solution and of course it would be wrong for me to not say 
you need a coach because that coach or that consultant or that sounding board actually is some of the best questions can come from your partner, your friends or people that are, uh, don't understand. So they're innocently asking questions that make you go, oh, uh, but to ask you those questions, because some people are glass half empty, some glass half full, some don't care about your glass, but really want you to make sure yeah. that the drinking stays complete so uh, to be able to get someone to ask you all those questions yeah. things you haven't possibly thought of so like my partner is very much the oh it could go wrong which I love because I'm like nothing's ever going to go wrong so my brain will automatically have a solution for every problem whereas her, she will always have a problem for every solution and I love that because we're very very different so somewhere in the middle we've got all the information we need so you know have a look if you listen to this have a look have a even look around you if you can't afford coaching or you're not sure you haven't found the right person for you they will be lots of people that are willing to say oh no that that could potentially go wrong because for some reason we we need to listen i know the reason we need to look on the negative so most people and maybe yours is slightly different you're part of only five percent of the population that move towards pleasure more easily than moving away from pain so that might be why your brain can't see the pain it's only moving towards pleasure but 85 90 95 there's you know stats change all the time will move away from pain so they're always looking for that pain they were thinking what is that pain what is that challenge what could be the problem what could go wrong they will be focused on that because of course the brain needs to say safe so they're always on this so it sounds like you've either done a lot of work on yourself or you've changed your brain pattern which is quite hard going so well done if you have so that you are always focused on the perfect and the good and the enjoyment and the passion and the you know all of that stuff that's why you can't see the problem. So, yeah, you need someone and there's, there'll be loads of them around for you that can just ask all those questions for you to make sure that would be well, my advice. Well, you know, I, I, ha I will make a confession. <laughs> so I actually have done a lot of training at this point in terms of cultivating a, a solution oriented positive mindset. And that wasn't the primary reason I couldn't see or anticipate problems uh, in my earlier days. Uh, my thing was, I think, a lack of experience in the sense of um, I led a very protected life, um, uh, you know, where everything was taken care of for um, me by my family. Um, uh, like certainly in the context of business and work, I never had to um, do anything. Uh, like there was no expectation that I would grow up to do any kind of work for money. Um, wow. you know, and um, so no one taught to teach me even basic skills about, you know, like how to manage money or business mm -hmm. or anything of that sort. And um, even when it came to dealing with other people, um, I was very protected in the sense that, uh, well, I had a lot of uh, social challenges. And so my way of protecting myself was to isolate and run away from any time conflict or drama happened. And the the what allowed me to do that was that my family with you know, the best intentions and love in their hearts um, just stepped in and saved me. So it's like I could run away, right? And so when I finally felt ready to step out on my own and be like, no, okay, um, I'm going to do something for myself and I'm going to deal with challenges myself, I couldn't even begin to anticipate the different kinds of challenges that could come up because I had no experience with dealing with challenges, whether it was in the context of other people um, or just business in general and the different things that can happen in business. So it was a very interesting learning curve and experience. And in some ways, I'm still learning, of course. Yeah. We're all still learning. We don't know what we don't know, do we? This yeah. is the thing. We call it an NLP, of which I'm a trainer. I train coaches, and we call it um, unconsciously incompetent. 
So like, we just don't know what we don't know. And then what happens is our, our competence becomes a bit more conscious and we realize how incompetent we are. So we become consciously incompetent. And that's a really, that's the place where we grow because we're like, oh, I need to know how to do that. And then we become consciously competent. I'm sure you've heard this. So like, we know what we're doing, but we're still really conscious of it. And yeah. then we go round yeah. round, and then we become in- unconsciously competent. So we're just not even aware of it. So it becomes easy. And at that point, it's really tricky because we are so in our normal space then that yeah. it's really hard yeah. to then take on and go back to that level of unconscious or conscious incompetence. So learning something yes. new. And it sounds like you have to do a lot socially, actually, just in life. So, yeah, yeah. I, I have no concept of that at all. I am very unconsciously uh, incompetent in knowing that because... Uh, I had a very different upbringing. My parents were older when they had me. So I was basically trained to be able to look after myself as an an only child. So it was the complete opposite. That's why you and I are very different in every way possible. Uh, You know, I was earning, I was running three jobs by the time I was 14 years old. So I... I was selling, I was working in a bar, I was working in a shoe shop. In fact, I probably had more money then than I've got now, in honesty, but because I didn't have any outgoing, I could just spend it on shoes and food and, you know, and wine as I got older. But yeah, so I was really trained from a young age how to look after myself financially and emotionally, but not so much physically, interestingly enough. So it wasn't until my mother died when I was 30 that I used a washing machine for the first time. So I wasn't trained physically, but all the other stuff I had down pat. So you had to learn some stuff. I had to learn it in different ways. So, um, but yeah, and I I think it's really interesting to hear the background. Uh, I I really do think that. But so, yeah, so you don't know what you're looking for. So again, you definitely need someone, uh, some mentoring, actually, then when you're doing some decision making, if you're about something that's completely new, because if they've been there, they know what can possibly go wrong. They've probably had it go wrong. Yeah. I think that's why I have a lot of the clients I do, because I've been in business for 20 years. And I say I've had all of the failures and all of the successes and everything in between. And I'm the sort of person that says, come on, then let's give it a go. You know, my parents were compulsive gamblers. So it was very, I'm very risk. I'm, I'm, I'm OK with risk, whereas some people are very risk averse so I'm okay to go what will happen if I run a free webinar I don't know let's just give it a go there's no failure in my head only feedback like that worked that didn't that should have happened there what could you have done differently so I feel like I do a lot of the testing because lots of people aren't capable of that or they've got too much to to lose maybe because I haven't got any children I'm I feel like I haven't got any real risk it's just me and I'll survive at any given point sort of thing well, like my four dogs, but they'll be okay anyway because they just need food. So, um, yeah, so I think, you know, that that take, making decisions, also you have to think about your fear ratio. Okay? Some people mm. some people are really fearful of success and failure. Yeah. And when someone says, oh, I'm scared of failure, I'm like, could it be success? Because they literally sit in the same place. Mm. They're, they're the same thing. They are essentially fear of change. So something's going to change on a dramatic level. If you all of a sudden go from earning, you know, £2,000 a month to £20,000 a month, there's going to be a massive change in every part of your social standing, your relationship with your family. Everything is going to change. And most people can't deal with that. They can't future pace that. They just can't even can't. Uh, same as if you were to lose that income then and end up living on the streets you can't you can't deal with that so I do lots of money mindset work I don't know if you do but understanding the floors and ceilings are really important yeah. and like raising the floor and raising the ceiling and just kind yeah. of helping understand how they can get more incrementally more without scaring themselves to death literally like that's why a lot of lottery winners spend all the money and end up more broke that's why, you know, and people, when they diet, they lose weight and then put it all on and then more because they're too scared of their end result. It's unknown to them. We always fear the unknown. It's our, it's most people, 5% of the population, not so much, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, that's our fear is the unknown because we have to be able to cope with everything. The unconscious mind has to be able to have a belief structure mm-hmm. is that we can stay alive and stay safe and certain. So it's, yeah. um, why decision making is so hard change is hard and we've had so many changes as we started off with this interview there's been so many changes and you know lockdown changed us all so much we were all forced into things to stop doing things to start doing things to behave differently to be with people differently and it's really changed most people in in quite big ways and they didn't want it 
they yeah. didn't want the change they were some of them were quite happy I think some of them needed it I think you know I needed it I met my partner just before lockdown and that you know that relationship wouldn't have gone in that direction we were kind of forced into you're either together or not <laughs> like you know are you going to be or not like you're going to have to take that risk and uh such wood so far three years later it's a risk that paid off for us both now we're now married so um so it did pay off but uh, I think a lot of people realized their life wasn't as they liked it and they couldn't do anything to change it at the time so they were stuck in this frustration part now we're allowed to we're in the fear of change uh I, there are several people that are probably in relationships that shouldn't be because they realized they weren't right but they just don't know how to change that so yeah yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's uh, that's like part of the blessing of when we do end up in these kinds of major crises, like global environmental crises. By environmental, I mean, you know, the the crises that are not just about my personal life, but like you know, a pandemic. I mean, that's like worldwide in this case, and it just hit us and it created an environment of challenge that and change for all yeah. of us to deal with and and the, one of the big blessings of going through a crisis of this sort is that uh, even for those of us who may be risk averse and fearful of change it forces us to create some change in our lives and gives us that opportunity uh, to create some change in our lives that we wouldn't otherwise have dared to do but you're so right like so many people I know just in the last three years uh, man they have you know like in America they're like talking about how there has been um, like record numbers in terms of people quitting their jobs and oh, refusing yes. to go back to the jobs that they had because they've now had a taste for how things can be different yes. and they're like we're not willing to go back to that same old way of doing things that was keeping us miserable and unhappy oh, one my, yeah one of my closest friends she was traveling before covid she was traveling an hour and a half each way to her job so of course then she started to work from home she's like there is no way i am going back to three hours sitting on a motorway in my car miserable moaning at traffic like three hours a day is a lot isn't it that's a yeah. that's you know i'm not going to out the percentage but that's a lot of your life sitting in a car so and of course it was proven uh, through many companies that actually they didn't even need to be in the office so lots of people realize they hated jobs and that they could get out and how different they felt and I think yeah it's so easy to carry on with the same carry yeah. on with the same everything like eating patterns is one for me at the moment I'm trying to break you know it's so easy to just do the same and I, I hear myself which is crazy because I do this for a living and I do this at a high level I hear myself oh you know you really do need to have the dessert after dinner and I'm like that's ridiculous, Vivian. You don't. What for? Like, you don't have to. No one's dying if you don't. In fact, quite the opposite. You'll probably live longer because you're like way less. Like, it's, so it, but we get so ingrained in things. Um, you know, it, it's like, you know, people that make the bed before they leave and they have to do it. Like, they're these kind of compulsive, like, life coping strategies. Yeah. Um, that are not really about life coping. They're just things we put in place to feel safe. So, yeah. So I'm wondering how you how you manage it then. I'm curious what your strategies are. <laughs> I come right back to the question again. Uh, God, I forget. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, um, so I'll take it on. So wait, uh, now I have to remind myself what was the question that I asked you. It was like, oh, so if you cannot even begin to imagine what the problems are that you might run into, how do you help? yourself in that situation so you know like for me um what really worked because I I am a student at heart I've always like one thing that I have been good at is learning being a great student and so for me what really helped was just go into that learning mode and be like I'm going to learn from whoever I can and whatever source I can and one of my favorite sources of learning is books. I love reading. And so I actually started uh, getting um, all the books I could find. Um, so for example, like in the business context, um, 
it was actually pretty easy because there's like so many coaches and trainings and business books out there that teach you about different business concepts. And so, for example, they will, um, yes, the mindset for business. Yes. Amazon. <laughs> exactly. So read a book, you know, like Vivian's, um, uh, you know, and so then you begin to learn about, ah, these are the different things to look out for. These are the different kinds of problems that we can run into. And then, as I mentioned, there is actually a lot of research that backs up what you were talking about uh, in terms of this uh, technique of, you know, um, like visualizing and thinking through, okay, what are all the different scenarios, good and bad, that we might run into and preparing for them. And so, um, you know, uh, um, like I read up on the research aspect um, uh, side of things, and there's some really amazing books that I'm blanking on the title. I've been trying to remember the title, but I think one of the books, if I am remembering it correctly, that I read um, called Good to Great? No, or was it the second book that the authors of Good to Great no, it was the book Good to Great that I read. Um, and they have another book, but um, it was in Good to Great that they talked about this research uh, specifically. And they found that one of the, when you look at great leaders mm -hmm. of different businesses across industries, um, and what distinguishes the great leaders from the good leaders, this was actually one of the characteristics that the great leaders were able to think about in advance um, what all the different scenarios uh, might be in terms of, uh, you know, again, like um, the good side of what would happen when they take various actions, but then also the bad side. And then in some ways, like people, other people would say to them, oh, you're obsessed, you're being hyper um, sensitive, um, you're, you're going overboard in terms of, of your preparations for when things go wrong, you know, but it was actually what distinguished them from the good business folks and made them great is their hyper alertness and awareness and preparation for not only when things went right, but when things would go wrong, because then when things did go wrong, they were in a better position to deal with those challenges and uh, respond to them and recover from them faster. So it's not that they didn't have problems and troubles either, but it was, just, it was that because of this characteristic and trait and way of doing things, they just got so much better prepared to recover and deal with when things did go wrong. Mm, interesting. Very interesting indeed. So as you say, uh, proving me completely nutty right with my strategy. <laughs> But I know it's been proven because I do it myself and everybody yeah. I've ever yeah. talked about it. But I have, uh, if you want to hack. So in NLP, uh, we have um, uh, like a, a four question hack, which helps you to make a decision. So anybody that's listening to this, uh, and of course you could. Um, and it's called Cartesian coordinates. Have you heard of that before? No, tell me more. NLP is a master practitioner, so it's a very high level. Um, and it can be a whole coaching session, but I'm going to shorthand it here for us because I know we haven't got long. And so the first question, if you're making a decision, so say the decision is to move house, let's just let's just take an example. And yeah. so the first question you would ask yourself is, what would happen if I did? What would happen if I did? What would happen if I did move house? So that's the first question. And then you just kind of get everything out of yourself. I was speaking it out somewhere or journaling it. Really great question. So the second question is, what would happen if I didn't? Mm -hmm. So we look at the two different scenarios. Yes, yeah? so this is self-coaching stuff. So what would help happen if I did? What would happen if I didn't? First two questions. Third question, what wouldn't happen 
if I did? Mm, the brain has a bit of a struggle with this. So what wouldn't happen if I did move house? And then the fourth question, which completely scrambles the brain is, and what wouldn't happen if I didn't move house? So what happens is it twists the brain into all yeah. sorts of into the neuro pathways to find out all the information. The second two questions are tricky to answer. The first two are really easy. But the third question is really the identifier. The third question helps you to look at things that you've never asked or thought or felt about. So you can definitely use that next time you are making a decision as well. So I call it the quick decision maker. So the four question quick decision maker. So hopefully that's helpful to anybody listening. Just write those questions yeah. down on a post it or on something. And whenever you're making a decision, yeah, what would happen if I did? What would happen if I did? didn't uh, what wouldn't happen if I did and what wouldn't happen if I didn't so um yeah it's a bit of a tongue twister really <laughs> so hopefully that will help hopefully that will help yes. someone somewhere <laughs> indeed <laughs> indeed I love that thank you so much for sharing those four questions uh, and I can totally see the value in them I, I mean I've used I think variations of that idea and technique um mm -hmm. I'm happy to have learned this um from you my parting gift around decision making because it is hard it's hard it's hard do you know when it's harder when you're making a decision proactively yeah. i.e the good to great like you just said with the book so when we're in this position where it's okay so like i'm just trying i'm just changing some structures in my business yeah. the business works it's all good it's like it's good but it could be great so yeah. actually there's a risk of changing it the risk it's like the risk versus the reward isn't it uh, the risk okay changing it is that it might not work at all and I lose the traction or if I the but the reward is actually it will be even better for everybody concerned so I have a, a phrase that goes with all of this of fortune favors the brave so whenever I'm thinking oh no I'm scared I don't know what to do will I do it come on Vivian fortune favors the brave come on you've got this because whatever decision you make just sets off a whole new set of decisions. So as long as you know that you're okay with making decisions and you can cope with whatever those decisions are going to give you as outcomes, it should be really easy. Um, my talking of books, my first ever book ever in personal development. So I'm going back a long time. I'm 50, so I was what 23 when I discovered NLP. Was Susan Jeffers. Feel the fear and do it anyway. I don't know if you've read that book. It's an absolute classic. Uh, it's not a very big book either. Yeah. And it basically yeah. talks in there. I remember the part that made me go, oh, I get it. There was a triangle and it said, you know, for every decision, you just got two other decisions to make. So you just literally, that's your whole life. Like, uh -huh. you know, you just have to take that route on your journey and then you've got to decide whether you turn left or right. It's literally as simple as that. So uh, yeah, Susan Jeffers, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. I'm not on any commission for that. Um, but yeah, it was a really helpful book on decision making. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I love that. I have read that book, um, at least in, in, in segments. And you know, that, I mean, just the title is so brilliant because it is a reflective of the core philosophy that, the book is teaching and for a long time I must say um it was my go-to also like in terms of feel the fear and do it anyway because I had so much fear about I mean so many things and I was so risk averse that I paralyzed myself um over and over again and so for me this idea of feel the fear and do it anyway it was one of the first ideas that uh, I took on to empower myself that was a more empowering thought and idea um, to move me into action because then it was like um, because my 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 previous standard for myself was uh, no I, I I until I'm not feeling fear anymore I'm not going to do something and it was like an impossible standard to meet in most yeah, cases. It's always fair because the brain always needs something to fix. It's always looking for something. And if there isn't anything, it'll find something, it'll make something. That is the nature of the brain. It's progressive. It wants to find answers and move forward. That's, you know, think about children. Why, 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 why? It's because the brain is continuously trying to work out why. So, yes, well done yeah. for finding finding your way forward, actually. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not easy. Well, life isn't easy. Life isn't easy. Like, we do well in the different levels of life. We do well to get through them. We really do. So yeah it's been joyful to talk to you as always absolutely 
Thank you so much, Vivian. Thank you so much. And, you know, there's more that I want to talk to you about, and we are running out of time. So Always. We could talk forever. Honestly, I'm happy to come back. Let me know the subject yeah. of the next one. I'm happy to come back and be a regular. I, I do lots of guest slots regularly on things in people's masterminds and memberships as the trainer, as the coach, and, you know, just as the as the conversationist. So it's just joyful to connect uh, yeah. with like minds. I so, absolutely I agree with that. <laughs> all right cool 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 so vivian um we will go ahead and wrap up for today and my last reminder for our listeners is please make sure you check the show notes because we will be dropping vivian's links in there so you can connect with her and get some help and support and make change more fun and easy Thank and, you. Absolutely. <laughs> and quick <laughs> yes <laughs> yes absolutely lovely thank you so much all right so until we connect next time i just wish you lots and lots of peace and joy